everyone, it's Jan with What You Make It, and I hope you and your family are settling in for a great holiday. I still have a few projects to do, and one of them was to make a card for my son, and obviously I wanted to do a masculine card, so I ended up doing this shadow box card that has lots of dimension, but you can actually fold it flat for mailing. And because he loves the outdoors, I thought I would do this, use this deer silhouette. And to begin with, I um, thought that I was going to use bright white and just do white silhouettes against that blue background. But then I realized that it was going to be a little stark and that maybe using a soft stone color for the silhouettes would be better and that's what I went with it's a really light gray and so I cut my three deer out and then I also used this other Simon Says stamp punch not punch it's a die it's called the small forest tree to create all the the, the trees for the scene now you've seen me use this embossing folder it's a Tim Holtz embossing folder um, I believe it's called his book covers and for the snow drifts I just sketched a little bit of some hills and I'm going to do layers on this so I, I draw the the frontmost layer and then erase and move on and use that as my template to kind of sketch out the next couple of layers I think multiple layers will give it some dimension and a place for the deer to rest. To give the snow drifts actually a little more texture, I'm gonna run them through this crimper. It's called the wavy crimper. And you just put it in, squeeze the handle, and then turn it through, and you get these nice little ripples. So I'm going to just create a background here with some snowflakes. I pulled a stamp out of a some stamp set that that I had that just had little grouping of dots and really you could use any stamp that had those kind of things we're just looking for quick coverage and creating an overall background after I did that I've gone back to my embossed card cover that I used it's one of the Tim Holtz embossing folders and I'm using antique linen ink just to kind of tint it all over with um, just a touch of that um, kind of cream color that I'm going back in with distressing if you want more of this I go into great depth on this particular technique on one of my previous videos called rustic button tree but first I use the blending tool to add some color in and then I pick actually pick up the distress ink pad and actually rub it flat and it will get all over the just the raised portions and really darken it up. Distress the edges and when you distress them you end up with white edges again so I went back with my walnut stain and just darkened them all up. Now here's what we need to do. We need to create two of these pieces and they're actually seven and a half inches long and four and a quarter wide that way when we finish the card we end up with the base of it being basically a four and a quarter by five and a half and I'm going to use my score um, Martha Stewart mini scoreboard and you're going to score it one half of an inch and one inch and then turn your paper around and score it half an inch and one inch on that. You need to do that for both of these pieces. These are going to be the way that we create the mechanism to um, pop it up or or leave it flat. If you're going to do any stamping on the back side of your card or anything that you're going to do, you need to do it before you start building all those layers up. So I just thought because it was going to be, it's a card that will stand up on its own. I thought I would put just a pine branch and some pine cones on the back, just in case you happen to see it from the back. Very simple. This is from the stamp set, simple um, P2 
peaceful pine cones. Now this is going to look kind of scary. I knew I needed to cut an opening and I decided I'm just going to be brave. I'm going to take my exacto knife and I'm just going to kind of follow the pattern that is available where there was no embossing there in the center. If you were doing, you could also do this by taking a couple of say spellbinder nesting dies and use them to create this kind of telescopic look. I want the outside frame to be slightly larger than the inside frame. So but I'm I'm using this book embossed book cover. So I'm just I'm it's kind of organic. I think that'll it'll work and after I cut it out I went ahead and added some distress stain to the center of it so it just had um, its edges were finished as well then because it was totally based on where there was embossing on that front piece I'm just going to lay it on top of the 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 front of the card base and just use a pencil to draw around leaving about an eighth of an inch and you don't have to be really precise because this obviously looks very organic and and um, you don't want it to ha be very angular but don't worry about it too much you just kind of want to make sure that there will be a little bit of the craft card stock visible now instead of cutting this all the way out with my exacto I just cut an, an X down the, the middle of it and then used my small scissors that are easier to do fussy cutting with and cut out that center centerpiece and erased my my pencil marks and just kind of checked to make sure that it was going to fit and it does and now I want to just add a little distressing to that inside edge as well because that's going to be visible and that'll just help it have a finished look so for the back piece, you fold the score line towards you and then away. You do, and um, this is going to make our mechanism, and I'm going to go ahead and add some um, score tape to it right now. Because the, the, the open, the popping open and standing up mechanism is probably going to get a little stress, I would not recommend using Snail Runner. I'm going to put the background that I created in into that space and that background is four and a quarter by five and a half and you can see it fits really nicely in there and I'm just kind of getting my first look at what it's going to what it's going to look like now I'm going to go to my back the the piece of the um, landscape that's the furthest back and I I put it down but I didn't put very much glue up near the top of it because I knew I was going to need to be able to slip things like this fawn down in behind it and I just kind of hold the frame in place to see where I want to do that placement and I put the little little fawn in and then I am now going to work on um, his mom and make sure that everything is going to be there. I have a little dimensional um, tape behind her and now I'm going to begin adding the trees and I am just putting a little glue down at the bottom just on a couple places not they don't require much they're very thin but gosh they are so cool against this dark background I'm really loving it really cool look I think it'd be fun to do some different seasons. Now, for the daddy deer, I needed to kind of hide him behind some of those, the waves of snow as well. And that's why I'm just leaving those tags um, down underneath, the, underneath his legs. And I'm going to do a double thickness of um, dimensionals on his body. And then I'm going to put some... Um, glue on the front of those little tabs so that when I place them down the dimensional on his body will hold him and then that glue is going to stick to the snowdrift 
and I just have one more snow drift to add there and I'm using some dimensional on it and I felt like it looked better coming up just a little bit so I did not make it flush with the bottom but you're not really going to see that and I'm just going to finish adding my tree so that it kind of looks like the tr the deer are out in a meadow near a forest they're going to be these trees are going to be off to the side you're not going to see a lot but I think they add a nice little detail there now I took my rock candy stickles and I on all the places that I could I just put it directly on the paper and then as I wanted to put it in between and behind the deer um, I, and brush some on the branches of the trees I used a brush probably could have done that by putting it on there before but I didn't so had to use the brush now I'm looking for the outside decorations and I have this pine tree um, it's a Tim Holtz Sizzix die and I actually trimmed down the side and I'm just using some distress stains I believe that is bundled sage and something twig I don't really gosh I don't remember what that is is called and then I also am putting out some walnut stain just to darken that tree branch a little bit and I'm just because I'm doing all of this on watercolor paper you've seen me do these techniques I'm just staining and adding color back on it and I thought while I was working with the darkest I would put a few little branches in there and now I'm going back in with peeled paint distress stain just to finish up the tree and going to use the Merry Christmas sentiment from Peaceful Pine Cones for my little little double ended banner. Now you're going to do the same thing that we did on the back but you want to make sure you've got really good creases and on the back side I put the tape on the outer edge of that little flap and this time I'm going to put it on the inner edge and that way everything from it'll just be a really good solid good solid um, adhesion and I'm using some dimensionals to pop up the front part of that frame and I found that it's easier to work on one side so take your adhesive off both of the flaps and then line them up And you want to, because this tape is really super sticky, you want to be really careful to get your edges matched before you you um, go over to the other side. So now that we have the one, we can go get the other side matched up and just take your time. It if you've measured well, it's going to it's going to work well, and you can see I'm kind of. It goes flat and then when you push it together it'll stand up really nicely and so for the finishing touches I'm just going to add my Merry Christmas banner and while it was still damp from the staining I kind of bent it so that it would have a little roll to it and I'm putting the pine tree up on some dimensionals you know when I got it all done I really thought that was going to be it but I felt like those flaps for with everything else being so very cool um, those flaps were just a little plain so I decided to add two eyelets on either side and to tie some some um, twine in there it would give it just a nice little another little rustic finishing touch and I still wasn't satisfied I felt like the banner needed something to kind of ground it so I grabbed a couple of little pieces of greenery like I've done on other cards and just tucked them in behind and there you have it a nice fun masculine pop-up card I hope you are ready for a great Christmas I am blessed to have you all as friends. You all take care, and I will be back to share another project soon.